how much have we heard right now about I want to wait to make any decisions about my portfolio to after the election. Mm-hmm. It drives me crazy because it's probably the worst decision you can make. Yeah. And you hear this every four years. And I don't think it matters how much we can tell people, you know, that historically it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter which party's in office. Like election years tend to be a good thing. And it's just because you have that certainty of who's going to be in office the next four years. But realistically, the markets are just made up of a bunch of humans who tend to invest emotionally rather than rationally. And you tend to get that every four years, regardless of what the data shows you. Yeah. And Bob, who's on vacation this week in Naples, must be nice. <laughs> It likes to say that you know the, the high correlation between the stock market can go up in ash- having a president. That's all that matters. Mm-hmm. And the thing that it comes back to is markets love certainty. No matter what it is, they love certainty. And we saw this four years ago. Markets melted up mm-hmm. after the election because we just knew what we were getting. And you're seeing this right now like – a lot of companies are holding off on deals right now. Um, a lot of companies are holding off on hiring people till after the election. These are going to be huge catalysts, but the stock market's going to be ahead of that. So it's like you've got to embrace the uncertainty now. And I guarantee most people won't do it. You know, I was actually talking to my brother-in-law over the weekend, and he owns a uh, cabinet making business. And he said the same thing. He said that, you know, his clients have basically, you know, have battened down the hatches. They're not doing anything after the election. But, you know, once the election comes and things are more certain, People will probably start doing stuff. I actually told him to raise his prices. <laughs> Get that pre-election discount. Get that pre-election discount. No, it's a good idea. It's Which good is idea. kind of the same yeah. thing with the market. You know, you've got a pre-election discount right now. And I think that's something people don't appreciate. They say, oh, I want to wait until I know what's going to happen with the election. I want to wait to see if we're going into recession. Like once you have that certainty, the markets have already moved and they've already priced it in. And that's something like you have to get in there beforehand and not after. Yeah, like amen, right? I, you know, uncertainty is not your ally as an investor, right? Yeah. And we've seen this the whole way through. Like, I just went and wait and see if we have a recession. Well, we didn't. And you just missed a 60% move in the market over the mm-hmm. last two years. I just want to see what the Fed does with interest rates. Well, they cut rates and the markets exploded to the upside. Yeah. Now it's like, I just want to see what happens with the election. So these, these totally aren't your ally. And I think this is the mindset right now of people trying to build their wealth. And it's just like the wrong strategy. Embrace the fact that there's uncertainty right now. Mm-hmm. You can guess who Chris is going to vote for. We all want to know. But, you know, that's not what's going to move the needle. It's the fact that uncertainty is coming in another month. Make your moves before the certainty happens. Absolutely. And I, you're seeing that in the data. There's so much cash that's on the sidelines that has just continued to grow this year. And I think some of that is the election uncertainty that you're seeing. And, you know, you can't control what the masses are going to do or when that cash is going to come out from the sidelines. But do you have cash? And when do you want your portion of that to get invested? I think that's the question. That's all you can really control. Yeah. You know, I was, I was talking to a prospective client this past week, and he was telling me how he got out of the market in August, and it hasn't really impacted him from his perspective. You know, what you don't realize is how much of the return that you miss. I mean, he missed almost a 4% move in the markets. That's a big, that's a big return. Yeah. In one week, we had emerging markets go up 6%. You don't get that move back, right, mm-hmm. afterwards. And that's the other thing, too, is like, I think you have lots of people sitting with cash at six or money market funds at $6.5 trillion, whatever it is. But then you have the blindly buying the S&P 500. Mm-hmm. And you think I'm getting 500 stocks. But what we know is the magnificent seven, seven stocks are 30% of that index now. So your money's just going into more tech, which, you know, it's done well lately. But, you know, the rally's broadening out. Um, mm-hmm. So you want to start to broaden out your exposure, too, because there's a lot of other places that have been working and it hasn't been tech the last couple of months. Yeah. And the other thing, too, I think people forget um, is that, yeah, I mean, big tech has done done really well you know big big market change but you forget about those interest and dividends you know which represents 40 percent of your return long term it's like you're missing out on that if you're not in i don't know chris my crypto i think it's going to the moon here and i don't think you need dividends i think you do because then you know maybe i could be able to afford a nice sweater that you're wearing (laughs) (laughs) probably couldn't but (laughs) this is a ceo sweater chris (laughs) ryan louis vuitton (laughs) pain But no, that's a good point. So if you look at a long-term dividends are something like 40% of your return mm-hmm. in the last 10 years, it's only been 15% because these growth stocks have gone through the roof, but that's going to change at some point. And those dividend paying stocks like utilities, real estate stocks, financials mm-hmm. have had a magnificent run the last three months. So things are rotating. You should rotate your portfolio as well. You got to keep up with the fact that you know times are changing and there's a lot of places to put your money. 
Yeah. And I think that's really something that you want to, you want to think about is we don't want to get out of those tech firms. That's not what we're saying. We just want to say, don't be over concentrated in them. And I think a lot of people don't realize how much they are. You might not think that you're invested, you know, 30% in these <laughs> seven companies, but I would say like 90% of people who come to us yeah. are. And so you want to make sure you're broadening out. You have your real estate, you have your energy. Energy's actually been outperforming a lot of your big tech companies, which I don't think people well, realize. You know what? I have the S and P 500 <laughs> then I have a large cap fund. <laughs> and then just to diversify it, I bought some NVIDIA, I bought some Apple, I bought some Microsoft. So I'm sitting at about like 15 different positions. I mean, man, my money is spread out. You're not parents. well diversified. You don't own Bitcoin. <laughs> <laughs> I have a crypto account. But that's the other thing. If you see where all the money is gone um, in the last like quarter, it all went into large cap funds, S&P 500 funds. And we all know they're all concentrated in the same stocks. Mm -hmm. And then on top of that, we see this with uh, prospective clients coming in the door. They also own Apple outright. They own NVIDIA outright. They own Microsoft outright. And for those that are feeling some pain, they own some Tesla outright because that hasn't done as well. Um, so they're just overweighting the overweight of the overweight. That's not great diversification or they're sitting with way too much money on money market funds. So like two mm -hmm. wrong places to be. Yeah. You know, it's funny. I haven't heard a peep about Tesla in like the last like 12 months. It's amazing when a stock goes down a lot <laughs> all of a sudden. You know, no one, no one talks about it anymore. It's kind of like the the gambler that goes to the casino. They always tell about what they win. They never tell you about what their losses are, uh, which is interesting because I think you know Tesla, the stock trades at an insane multiple, right? It's extremely expensive, mm -hmm. and everyone just like such a hater of Musk now. Um, but man, oh man, I mean, like if you look at the robotics, you look at the artificial intelligence. I mean, I still think the guy's brilliant, and what he's doing is brilliant. Maybe the stock's not a great stock, still, the guy's changing the world. I mean, did you see that? rocket come back to earth and I caught it with those arms and yeah. it was incredible. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's a good point. But you know, that at the bottom line is like, he's going to keep innovating, but that doesn't change the fact that it depends on who wins the election, Chris. I think if, if, you know, <laughs> if the wrong person wins, I think he'll stop innovating. I think literally he'll just stop trying to change the world. Try to try to get us to Mars. I think he'll just stop that completely. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't think he's too, I think you're right. I don't think he's too concerned about the stock price. <laughs> I will say that if we get a million subscribers on this episode, Ryan will tell you who he's voting for. <laughs> <laughs> That's the bottom line. We're, we're not, we're, no one's stopping going to work every day, trying to figure out how to, to grow their wealth, how to better their situation because there's an election. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that's the attitude you have to have when it comes to investing in the stock market right now is, you know, the world doesn't end very often. And no matter what regulations they put in place, who gets in office, you know, I would say a corporate CEO is much smarter than a politician. Mm -hmm. You know, they're going to figure out ways to navigate what the rules are and figure out a way to thrive. I mean, look, we had a lot of regulation the last four years, yet profits are at a record high because, you know, innovation in America is amazing. I mean, Elon Musk is a perfect example of that. Mm -hmm. And I think that's another reason why you don't want to bet against the stock market before the election. Oh, exactly. Because, I mean, that's what you're doing is you are buying pieces of these companies who are going to figure out how to continue to be profitable regardless of who's in office. And I think that's just something you have to remember as you get closer to the election. Yeah. yeah. I mean, like, even like during the pandemic, it's like the entire economy shut down. But like from day one, the CEOs around the world were trying to figure out ways to be profitable again, get people back to work, get product moving again. Yeah, it's like we, we go to a re recession about 15% of the time. So it's kind of like bet against the American economy at your peril. Don't wait for the election noise to be over. Take advantage of the volatility, uncertainty, the opportunity.